Yeah, this Thena deck was played to the number one spot on the infinite leaderboard, which, of course, this early in the season basically means uh, it was just skyrocketed up the ladder, getting to infinite ahead of everybody else, taking that number one spot. But that's what we're all looking to do, right, is climb uh, the ranked ladder really quickly. And it seems like this sort of deck, this sort of package surrounding Thena is the way to go, which isn't a huge surprise. We've seen these, you know, Angela... Tempo move cores with the Elsa and the Kitty core in there. This has been the foundation of a lot of different decks. Thena actually seems to fit rather nicely into this package. There are many scenarios where you've got, you know, a couple twos to play on turn four, a three and a two on turn five. Kitty can really grease the wheels on this deck and make it super smooth to play things out because, you know, she's that consistent second card on any given turn, which means your Thena is, is very often, you know, a 210, a 213 in this deck which obviously that's swinging way above its weight for a two drop that means you've got like big thenas angela can get big in this deck too of course with the jeffs the kitties and the nocturnes all giving ways to get extra angela buffs even us agent is like a 27 or a 211 and net output in some cases so you've got all these super threatening two drops that can each impact the game in their own way with like you know super cheap costs uh which Makes this deck feel really good, right? I went on a 78% run with this one. I've climbed from like 75 to 86 or 87 or something already with this deck. You know, there are bot games in the mix early in the season, which is clouding the data on Thena a little bit. Like everything just looks inflated when it comes to win rates and cube rates right now. That said, I, I think this card's going to be worth it. Um, I, I've seen some hesitation and I feel a little bit of trepidation myself around Thena. I just had a few games, and I think you'll see at least one in this video where it's like you get her down and then sometimes the curve just doesn't line up if you don't hit the kitty pride. But all in all, you know, she's not the only thing you're trying to do in this deck. It works really well without her. There are, you know, enough threats, enough stat building, enough reactivity that you still win plenty of games without that Thena. And then sometimes she comes along and she's a 213 and it feels almost inevitable because things are just perfectly smooth and your power output is insane thanks to all of those really cheap two drops doing such big numbers. So uh, there are a handful of kind of variations of this deck and this style right now, all kind of doing similar stuff. There's some with the top end of uh, Professor X and Cannonball that look really good. There are a lot of lists that have maybe eight cards in common with this, but just a few things swapped out here and there for pocket metas and preferences and so on. But this kind of package seems like it's going to be working really well at least early on in this new season seems you know effective enough against bots and so on too to help you get those extra cubes on ladder so if you're looking for a quick easy climb this deck might provide exactly that as you're about to see oh okay yeah we love kitty pride kitty pride is the fuel for this deck uh-oh <laughs> oh, oh, oh. opponent might also be playing this deck too this one's already gaining or this this sort of you know obviously this angela kind of package has been uh people's first pick for thena decks and uh yeah we're gonna see a lot of this probably but that's okay we'll just play it better it's it's really that simple uh, we'll put Nocturne there for sure, right? So that we don't risk Fisk Tower, but have some flexibility. I mean, in, in a weird way, the, turning off Elysium might be beneficial to us. We have such a cheap deck, we know. I mean, the opponent might also. But sometimes your deck is too cheap. You can just kind of play anything, everything anyway. So that extra energy flexibility can occasionally benefit the opponent more than you. This seems like they're going super hard. Zero makes me think they have a Sasquatch, which we don't have, but we do have a Shang-Chi. So we wouldn't be heartbroken if a Sasquatch came down. Ooh, Thena is here. Yeah, so see, this is what I was talking about about the Elysium, right? Like, I think the opponent's going to benefit more than we will. Uh... Sasquatch won't go mid, right? Sasquatch will go left or right. Um, but but I only want to play two cards per turn anyway, right? I, I really... With Luke Cage... Just thinking here, like, Shadow King's fine. I can hit Elsa and do some work there. 
Uh, we may not play for Thena every single turn, but I think turning off Elysium is going to benefit us the most. Uh-oh, danger room scary. No, no, no. Okay, nice. <laughs> nice. Uh, Jeff. Okay, so no Sasquatch, actually. Just the Mysterio for now. I mean, they might have a Sasquatch, but it, it wasn't available, right? Does make life a little more awkward. This is a pretty good Sage Kitty, I would say. We don't really mind Vibranium Mines. Um, does he put my priority here? No, we do. These stupid Mysterios aren't contributing to priority enough. Just thinking about Shadow King on that Kitty Pride would be pretty nice. Um, Sage is early. Kitty Pride is not helping the Sage. Vibranium, I think, is actually pretty good because I need a play. I don't know if anything else that could be better, but... Angela could be worse, Jeff could be worse, and Ravona could be worse. Uh, so, just gonna go ahead and do that. Sage up to eight, not bad, right? A three eight's not something we're complaining about, just not a home run, Sage. There's a wolf's bane. Well, that's definitely. Uh, oh my god, the Sasquatch is there, just came down a little late. Okay, perfect. So now Shang-Chi, Shadow King is just the dream, right? This is insane. Shang-Chi here, Shadow King here. I mean, if that's the real Mysterio left, it's kind of annoying. Oh, man. Do I try to win mid with just, like, Thena, you know? Like, does Thena just carry this? Like, they move out of Jeff. I don't know, man. They can add a ton of power there. I, I think I need to Shadow King this. I'm just... Like, if this is the real Mysterio, I might lose. They may give up right, though, because Danger Room also could punish them, too. Uh, but this is kind of scary, right? Like, this is iffy. Oh, yeah, that Jeff wins them right. Oh, okay, God, don't be the real Mysterio left. Don't be the real Mysterio left. Please, God. Cannonball. Oh, my God. Wait, does that save me right? Hold up. That's not the real Mysterio left, so we win mid. <laughs> left and right. Okay. The cannonball. Victory into the agent uh us agent didn't really do as much as they hoped maybe it's a good turn if the sage went left they might have thought they had it mid but uh the the, the shadow king just reducing that wolf spain was such a swing right okay yeah ravona on two is great for the thena on three with a two drop that just feels like such a nice rewarding line bifrost uh is gonna stack us up right or mid we love xandar shame we can't get wide in xandar but I think Agent uh, Thena is fine. We'll go Agent left, Thena right, probably. Xandar is better for wide boards, so the opponent wouldn't want to play a big card in Xandar, but they might want to play a big card in Bifrost. That said, seems like everybody is playing variations of some kind of Thena Angela thing. It, it's funny. Um, I think by most metrics, I'm actually going to do this instead, right? Although we don't really want Angela and Thena together, to be honest. Maybe for now it's actually still this. Uh, I've, I've actually still heard kind of mixed thoughts about Thena. Like, it it's good, but, you know, it does demand um, a certain way to play. Like, you have to you have to play two guards every turn to make it worth it, and that can be kind of limiting or frustrating sometimes. I was actually surprised. Oh, God. If only... Oh, wait, that's after turn three, and it's already turn four. Oh, we're fine. Oh, no, we're chill. Dude, that made me super nervous. Oh my god. <laughs> made me really nervous. Okay, uh, this is good. Oh, you know, I was surprised how low the curve on this deck was, because I felt like I might get into situations like late in the game where I want to play, you know, a two, a one, and a three together, and that doesn't really fit the Thena, but it's worked out. I've I've already climbed a ton with this one, and the you know it's self-evident in the numbers, so. Uh it's 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 something about it's the right shape you know two threes on six is fine you don't actually have to like finish on the kitty pride or whatever it's clearly something that, that makes sense it, it, it it's relevant but you don't have to um elsa's sage there's a ton of threes but i can't go sage mid also fills me up which feels kind of bad uh we could do elsa shadow king just to get uh some bodies down i mean uh, this is all threes dude i don't really it, it looks like maybe the opponent's a c3 deck i don't have to worry about uh valkyrie 
here, but I might have to worry about a Valkyrie here, but they also may just give me Xandar for free in that case. I also have Luke Cage, which of course can stop Valkyrie. So there's a couple of answers to Valkyrie if this is indeed, indeed a C3 deck, which we don't know for sure, but feels like it might be. Sunspot doesn't read C3, and She-Hulk definitely doesn't read C3. Kind of looks like High Evo that hasn't played a single High Evo card. B bro, how are Thena and She-Hulk both 10? Are you serious? Is this real? Maybe just play this here to scale Angela one more time and, and, and hit the, the Elsa buff, right? And just get Nocturne left, I guess, yeah. Victory. Dude, it's pretty crazy though when you look and it's like Thena, not even done yet, by the way, it was gonna go to 13 here, but just matches the She-Hulk. <laughs> It's like, hey man, my six drop. I had to skip a bunch of energy to make this playable, dude. And your Athena is just already matching as a 210. It is pretty silly. Ooh, Athena. I've been missing you, Athena. Let's find that kitty pride to make my life so happy. We have Shadow King Luke Cage, so we could even play Shadow King without too much risk, maybe. Kitty. If no kitty, of course, we'll just rip like Elsa and start going that route instead. Squirrel Girls is making me think like Gilgamesh. That could be a good Shadow King card. Ooh, Sanctum closed off. Ah, oh, never mind. Sanctum available. Beautiful. <laughs> uh, so we got to play this by turn four because we want to move it on five at the latest to open up Sanctum. So that's pretty cool. Pickle Rick, but not the real one. How was the latest season of Rick and Morty? I don't know. I didn't watch it. Sakar. Mm. Okay. Yeah, let's just, well, I mean, Elsa, we're gonna wanna move the Nocturne a little later, right? Next turn's weird though. I still don't actually have a good line for next turn. I'm still not in a great spot on this. Like I need a two drop, maybe Shadow King plus Ravona. This is definitely some kind of like Gilgamesh zoo. Gilgamesh might want to go here. Do they have the Kazar in time, though? That's the question. Can they play the Kazar on turn four? Uh, oh, I forgot to in turn. Oh my god, they put us away on me. I'm a fool. Debris. Okay. Bro! Some of these have been... Anything like making tokens, they said, has kind of been bugging out the game a little bit. Like the Breeze and Ultrons and stuff. I mean, we're seeing it happen live. Um, Is the Shadow King worth... Oh, I gotta, dude, I gotta play, I gotta play Nocturne this turn, though. Yeah, man, this curve is weird. Thena's just not doing the work we need right now. Because I gotta be able to move this on five to access Sanctorum on six. Yeah, dude, Thena's just struggling right now. It's not been good. Kazar, so Gilgamesh is gonna want to go right. Surely they play it now, don't they? This hits Kazar, he goes to zero. Part of me is thinking like, what if I just don't play Nocturne or don't move Nocturne? Thane is up to four. Elsa is seven. Agent is going to be five is 12, 17. Dazzler would be kind of expect to go up to 18, but I can also Oh no, I wouldn't be able to buff Thana next turn because I wouldn't have the space. Dang, dude, this is like a really complicated game. We got Athena and she's just kind of failing us. Uh, maybe in this case, it's Ravona. Just to say, like we're losing left, we think, so we might as well save some flexibility in this case, right? Uh, oh, it's Blue Marvel instead. Oh man, no Gilgamesh. Sad day. Now Gilgamesh is gonna wreck me mid. Although they have priority, so a Shang-Chi could catch. Does uh, Shang-Chi Agent win this? They go down to eight, I go up to 10. I mean, they definitely want a Gilgamesh, right? But can they Gilgamesh plus something else? Because the something else off Blue Marvel and Kazar could be too big. So they have a one drop to go with it. Oh, just Gilgamesh, let's go! We wreck! Let's go. 
Perfect. If they had the one drop to fill, uh, they would have screwed us. But as it stands, we just get there. That's so sick. Uh, Athena got awkward, right? Like this is one of the. This is kind of a nice game to showcase Athena. Not really feeling very good. It was one of those where we had to kind of play the Nocturne when we did. I mean, in hindsight, I probably should have played it on three. Elsa also feels good to get down first, though. You know, like you want the you want the Elsa down first. So you start getting those buff sooners. I don't know. It's interesting. You know, the the build I played for Gilgamesh, which didn't feel great, I have to say, had a lot more organic one drops. Like I had one drops that you could play. These other builds that have been doing better for the record, like this has been performing better in the data, have more of the like debris, squirrel girl, dazzler, like you see like complimentary stuff, not raw one drops, which we saw there them not having access to the raw one drop actually hurt them. Cause if they played, you know, even an, an Ant-Man here would have been plus three, which would have set up the tie, you know, we would have lost a tiebreaker or whatever. Ooh, okay. Kitty's good. Where is Thena, though, man? Show me the new card. Reed just wants to play the fun new card, not the same stupid garbage. Thena. Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay, so Ravona's really nice here for, well, might be nice for Thena, but actually it's also sometimes not. Now that we have Kitty, we don't necessarily need the Ravona as much, but it's all the same. Uh, we, could, we could go like Agent Thena instead if we wanted to. It's kind of hard to know, though, where you want things to go here. Like, where does this Agent really belong? I think mid's fine. Thena's big left. We'll start dumping the Kitty there with the Elsa next turn to keep that Nebula in check. Uh, oh, totally fine. Yeah, that's no problem. Seems very odd to put the, the Jean Grey with your Nebula. I, I don't know that I totally understand. Uh, sadly, this turn, this is out of sequence because I have to play a card first in Jean Grey. Uh, so, you know, this is out of sequence, but next turn we'll be cooking with the, the Kitty Pride gas here, if you will. Angela and uh, there's their Thena. Okay, so pretty big mid actually. We might want to start thinking about how to win right, which I guess uh, Nocturne's pretty decent at winning right. Oh, with Luke Cage, Shadow King is great at winning mid as well. I don't know if the opponent will have the Luke Cage or not. They might. Could be one of those where having priority first matters a ton, though. If they uh, they don't play the loot cage this turn, that is. Kitty Pride, okay. Oh, they're just done. All right. Man, why are they so done? I'm really surprised they're done here. What was this going to be? Man, I guess they... I guess they know left is just cooked 100%. Like, they just literally can't win left. And then... I wonder what it was about mid, though, that made them feel so cooked. Ooh, we got Athena. I have hardly seen any Athenas today, man. She is hiding like crazy. I need me some Athena games for the video. Ooh, destroy deck. Okay. Uh, Shadow King and Shang-Chi can both be kind of insane for destroy decks. Athena left looks good to me. No turn three line without a Kitty Pride, though. Let's see. You know, part of me wants to, like, add another one drop to this deck sometimes because it's like, ah, I feel like I need to hit these turn threes for Athena more often. But but you got to keep in mind, it's not just Athena deck, right? Like, you're you're not only winning via Athena. You're trying to win via other mechanisms, too. So this is making me think we're going to get a pretty good Venom here, potentially. Uh, Venom Shang-Chi, that is. Like, we're going to be able to connect on a, on a big Shang-Chi hit, which is cool. Ah, uh, we love Angela here. This is good, yeah. Angela, not very good in Shuri's Lab, but I do want to start playing all the move guys in Shuri's Lab, so do I go ahead and just put the Angela here for now? I don't know. That feels a little weird. I I, I, I think we're going to rely on Shang-Chi to win mid, mostly. So we've also got this Elsa kind of being weird. I don't know. Maybe this is fine. I don't know. For now, at least I think it's chill. 
we're gonna move these out elsewhere and scale up this has got to be a venom right it's like deadpool venom or something right now deadpool venom i might have tried to greed that venom just a little bit harder but probably good for them that they didn't uh i think that's that's likely good news so we do have um dropped priority here which is pretty cool oh dude sure dude kitty pride is so insane on shuri's lab if you hit it early we, we would have been absolutely nuts here this should help us lose priority right because we'll still be down mid and we'll be down right so that gives us the good shang chi option like shang chi kitty next turn's pretty solid you gotta worry a little bit about a null so i do i think need to cover kind of you know left and right in this case opponent is going uh oh okay that's chill no kitty risk here thankfully they didn't see the kitty yet so that's good maybe a blessing in disguise we hit the kitty there they wanted the deadpool to be alive huh well they're just locked up right so this feels sort of solved right i mean i guess there's some risk with nocturne moving maybe or maybe maybe we don't even risk that though maybe we just do this um because this is still 13 and three right so it, it, it's enough to cover right i don't think there's any weirdness there i don't expect a killmonger that would push them to 17. like in theory the killmonger but but the nocturne could also screw me right like is the nocturne riskier you know I'm just not gonna worry about the Nocturne. I, I I think this is fine. I I think this covers 99% of the time. I don't expect the Killmonger to come down. I expect like a Null, realistically, uh, like a big six. There could also though be, well, no, Arnim Zola wouldn't make sense. You'd just be shifting the power here. We'd still win. That'd be fine. It's probably just Null or some mix of three drops or whatever, you know, that sort of stuff. Yeah, Shang Chi just covers here. This is the important thing. Nice. Athena, you know, not the craziest here, but well, no, I mean, I'd say that a 210 is insane, right? The good news is like it forced the death, even though it didn't win its location. Uh, you know, death could have gone mid to like sort of shore up or hedge or something. I mean, still would have died to Shang-Chi, but you could see why 24 here might have made a difference if the game looked a little, a little, a little uh, different. So Athena just forcing their hand. Mindscape. <laughs> Sometimes this deck can kind of dump the hand. Ooh, Athena's cool. Uh, let's not go Athena and Hellas though. It might be hard to compete if the opponent has a lot of one drops. Ravona, I need a kitty pre, please. Yeah, we'll go Luke for now. Send him right. Next turn is uh, Shadow King Jeff, I guess, but you really don't love the Shadow King here. Certainly feels poorly timed, and Angela or Ravona or Kitty would be more welcome. If I need to, though... Oh, Ravona, nice. Okay, that makes my life so much happier. Uh, I was thinking maybe there's a world where... I mean, we, we probably Shadow King this... Never mind. We don't Shadow King this next turn. Uh, okay. Well, I mean, we might still Shadow King, but not for the reasons we think. Uh, we have the Luke Cage, so sh I mean, this has got to be right, just so we don't give the opponent anything to do, right? It it's not as good for Athena, but Luke Cage makes the Shadow King fine. We play around any, like, goblins or anything here, too, because we already saw some weird goblin stuff, so I don't, I don't know that we'd see a Hobgoblin, but Ravona makes it not impossible. So, uh... Just get really big here. We got one, two, three, four for this sage. So it's actually already really big, even though we have priority. It has the chance to be huge. And then we're just dumping them with Shang Chi, which I have to imagine we're better off. We'll have Jeff that can go mid to make space and Kitty bouncing to make space as well. So we'll be really large. Angela, Jeff. Okay, so this is this is the um, kind of cannonball Professor X half of this, by the way. Um. Dude, that shark chi would have been kind of handy, dude. I like that's a crappy debris. Are you kidding me? How big is Nocturne? I'm going to 17 off Thena. Oh no, actually no, that's not right. Uh, the 14 is counting uh, Kitty Pride. 
So we're going to seven, nine, and eight is um, 17. Oh, maybe that is right. Uh, Nocturne is 22 plus. No, that's not plus anything. I think that's it, right? They don't have any way to scale this, though. Well, they can. Their Jeff can move. Ah, dang, dude. The Jeff can move. Oh, boy. We know they have Shang-Chi plus garbage, though. Like, can the... Shang-Chi adds an extra two. Would that set up a tie? Oh, boy. We're also just not that strong right for the record, either. Like, we're also kind of tiny right. Uh, they moved their Jeff mid instead of right, so... Shang-Chi? Yeah, I think... Are we tied? Did I do the math right, dude? I don't know, man. Yeah, we're tied. Do we win the tiebreaker? No, we lose the tiebreaker, dude. Oh, my. Priority killed us here. Our sage going first killed us. Okay, opponent snapped on one. Uh, I just realized my screen's all uh, chunky looking because of the freaking my capture card sometimes. I don't know why I gotta plug in the cables. Or, or not chunky, like uh, charred. It's it, it's like deep fried. You guys see this? You'll probably see it halfway through the video. But I gotta go. I gotta go fix the capture card real fast. Uh, all right, so Angela kind of probably wants to go right. Um, I mean, I guess she can go left, and then we can fill it up, and then still move her to New York to keep filling her up. That's pretty cool. Hood gets destroyed off the Nico. Beautiful opener for them. Really good stuff. Makes me think, you know, not necessarily a nihilist, more about just good stuff. Whoa, that Elysium is pretty spooky um i'm just out of cards so i think i'm gonna turn it off like the opponent will benefit more from this like if they have like fives and sixes you know playing them down earlier my hand is already empty so the the energy savings for me are not particularly relevant i'm gonna run out of cards before i run out of energy so let's turn off elysium after after this turn really good angela stacking here classic angela lane stack uh, this might be setting up for a Sasquatch, so let's keep uh, Shang-Chi in mind if we can find him. Be cool. Third Nocturne might go mid, which would deny that Angela line we talked about, but that's still okay. We're still going to be strong left. Might go left, too, to give them more time, but I guess we'll see. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be a pretty nice stage at some stage, but I don't know if that stage is right now. This is three, five next turn. I'm drawing two more cards. There are technically some iterations. If I got like Luke Cage and Shang-Chi, I wouldn't be able to play both. Uh, but Kitty's filling in the gaps a little bit too. Sage left right now, though, doesn't feel very good. And I just, I think Sage right's a little too early at the moment. So let's just do this for now. We're going to be super strong left, but we can bail out with Jeff and New York. So the cool thing about the New York is right. Like we can, if we get ahead enough with vault, we can just, you know, abandon as needed and, and redevelop, but we'll see how ahead we get hellfire club. Okay. There's a sentry. So maybe there is an annihilus coming after all. Oh, and there's the Sasquatch. Yeah. All right. There's a white widow. Everything gets played. My God. So they did get super strong left, but they're also kind of full in New York, so they don't have maybe as much flexibility as we do, I would say. Uh, if we do this to stop, oh, dude, no, I, dude, no, I, ugh. Well, I'll tell you what else we can do, though, actually. We can, uh... We could move the void to New York, right? Like if they annihilate me here, right? We just we just move it to New York, I think. Uh, there's an other alternative here too, where we do the we do this. The sage is a little bit bigger, right? As is Angela, I guess. Uh, and then it's about winning right by, but they might turn off New York. Oh yeah, they did. Shoot, dude. It's not an Isles though, is it? Your island is insane for them. Oh God. Yeah, there's the Annihilus. Oh Lord. Well, now I got some real work. Uh, well, I guess we're so far ahead left though that can I win mid with Shadow King now? 
like Shadow King Kitty type stuff. I mean, I'm definitely not winning right. We know that. What is this, 12? I'll go up to 416. Oh my God. Oh, but they don't feel confident. Oh, it must not be the real Mysterio. Wow, I love it, okay. Okay, Nexus. Uh, I mean, Angela's pretty good in theory in Nexus, yeah. Ooh, we could also turn it off. Um, it just depends on the kind of deck we're playing, whether or not we think it's better or worse. Uh, kind of have to make the call soon, though, in theory, right? Maybe not that soon, though. Let's let's wait, because Agent can be really good in Nexus if they're, you know, a big deck. Trying to get there on big power. They're playing in Muir Island with a naked sage. Uh, boy, I, I don't know. <laughs> boy, I don't know. Uh, maybe a bounce deck? Just planning to bounce this, I guess? I don't think it's a bot with... It almost can't be, right, with this portrait alignment. Must be a bounce plan. Wong. Maybe gonna be Nocturne? But you gotta be a Nexus for that. Dang, dude, I, I just don't, I just don't know. Uh, I'd rather this be here probably, right? Like that, if it is, if it is, uh, not, not Nocturne, Nomura. God, I get them confused. They came out at the same time and <laughs> too close together and so on. Oh, it's Black Panther. Okay, so we'll just strong cheese into a priority. That's totally fine. Okay. Now it makes sense. So, uh, dude, Shadow King would also be really funny. But I think Shang Chi just solves the, the problem altogether, right? Uh, and then Sage is, I mean, it's a little better than Jeff. So, sure. Yeah, no, this is, this is totally fine. Uh, priority here to be a Nexus is just like free advantage, you know? Oh, they're snapping on it. Um, I mean, why not, dude? I don't know. Whatever. Let's let's snap back. Let's do the thing. I I think we're okay. I mean, there there could definitely be a surprise. I don't know. Uh, but but this feels pretty good. Something like Quake would maybe be the scariest play. I don't know. Is this just Arnhem's Ola like we expect? It's just it is, dude. It's so sad, dude. <laughs> they just two power Wong. Oh god, dude. The confidence here. It's actually negative two power. <laughs> they went negative because of the stupid uh the, the US agent, dude. Oh my god, that's great. I could have had zero and zero and still won this game. Okay, no twos. A lot of twos in this deck. Go twos, show me a two. Where's them twos at? Show me one of them baby twos. Is Xanar the featured location, man? I've seen it a hundred times. I know you guys laugh at me every time, but it, it's gotta be, right? Dude, echo blindness, turn it off. It's not, the, it, that's, we, we know it's there. Luke Cage can't go mid, just remember. Can't go mid. Uh, dude, I'm like torn now. <laughs> Do I turn off Vormir or Dream Dimension? <laughs> Uh, I mean, theoretically, Dream Dimension is not a huge problem for us. Uh, regardless, I, I like the Nocturne here, I think, just to get on curve. Next turn feels like an Angela and an Elsa. Okay, so the opponent played their Nocturne left. They might be turning off Vormir, so maybe I should turn off Dream Dimension, right? Uh... I don't know though, man. Like, what what can I play next turn? I uh, this is three, three, four. So not really anything unless I get a kitty. Because the twos all cost three. Um, doesn't really feel very good, does it? I mean, we can go Luke Cage, but it's like uh, the Angela kind of wants to go mid in this case, right? But then Luke can't go there. I mean, Elsie can go there, but. Half my cards want to go into this echo, right? It's it's weird. Um, what's the right line then here, man? Uh, it, it, uh, I guess it's this, but it feels really weird. 
Subterranea. Oh no. Iron Heart. Okay. Kind of makes me think of maybe like a Nocturne deck. Or excuse me, Nomura deck. Totally a Nocturne deck. We know that. <laughs> makes me think of a Nomura deck, maybe. Boy, this is so hard. This Echo is, is proving more annoying than you might think. I mean, is it though? Maybe we just say screw the Lucade, screw the agent. Like, do we really need them? It's more about like, this is where I want my power to be because I think they want a Nocturne, right? Uh, and then we just set up for like, Thana plus whatever. Maybe we just give up Wormir. It's so weird because my numbers just aren't that big. The Luke Cage does mean like the Shadow King is, is more awkward, but I don't necessarily have to play Shadow King. It's kind of funny. Like, we're actually just going to play into the Echo like fools. <laughs> Rock. Uh, sadly, the agent would have been pretty insane into this Iron Lad, but the Echo is no good. The opponent probably thinks I'm making a mistake here. Like, I had Echo blindness, but I, I just have nothing else to do. It's just a lack of uh, a better line, right? Still not a very good line, to be clear. <laughs> I still don't love it. Um... I mean, I guess Shadow King here is just always better, right? Because it does actually debuff the Echo by two. None of my stuff is buffed other than Xandar. Um, does, it, does it ever hurt itself from Elsa? It actually might, right? But that happens here too, so that doesn't really matter. Uh, I actually think the way that Thena, Thena works right now, I think if I play the rock and it gets destroyed, it won't matter, but I'm not gonna risk it. She's like bugged right now. Oh my God, is this gonna be enough? Let's see. The Nocturne did indeed go right as we suspected it might. Uh, so I'm glad we didn't commit a ton of power there. Oh, but say, wait, Sage is fine. Oh, I'm a genius. I'm an actual God. I may be the greatest player on earth. Oh, I, dude, we stole this game, dude. I love it. Dude, the, 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 this is something I've had to comment a few times lately on YouTube. So this is a good example to talk about it. I've had a lot of comments saying like, you should do this like two card sequence or I call it kind of a card to card line, you know, like you should never play USA agent into echo or whatever, right? You should never play Luke Cage into echo. That sounds like a pretty obvious rule, like a heuristic that you would follow, like a shortcut to playing the game the right way. There was an example on YouTube's like, you know, play a green goblin on an Angela. Cause you know, you, you, you know, you, you get to scale the Angela without taking space or, or send a green goblin to where your opponent is the most full to like lock them out or whatever, right? These are like nice little shortcuts. And sometimes they're really helpful. They help you process a game really quickly. You know, you can just kind of follow some obvious rules. You don't have to think as much. I'm not discouraging those. What I am discouraging is locking yourself into those shortcuts and not seeing the game as a whole. So like, if you if you take a card to card moment to moment approach to this game you would never play luke cage and us agent into an echo because it's like well i'm losing all my effects like why would i want to do that but when we start to assess it we see well the opponent's a really small deck agent's not very good at, at small decks there would have been an iron lad hit but that's really only one card out of their whole list luke cage doesn't seem particularly relevant right we don't have anything buffed anyway mid that we'd want to kind of you know protect we think their nocturne wants to move right so that they can contest vormir because they seem to be giving up left so nocturne moves right that's where their power is going to be i don't want to have to contest right from like an empty spot when i'm already you know stacking up mid pretty nicely into elsa and i have a little bit more stuff to play towards so it's like playing out the game state as it exists sometimes by foregoing the sort of obvious lines if that makes sense and i don't even know if this is the best example but uh, you know, we, we, in essence, I was willing to break a rule in order to make the better game state play. And, and sure, we got a little lucky from the Sage, you know, and the Shadow King hit and stuff like clearly. But that was an opportunity that might not have existed had we played this game out uh, in a more traditional way. Like we just may not have been able to get that that win.